down, so I know some of you have, have heard it, uh, but I'll share it in case you didn't see it. See what happens when you name a hurricane after a man. He won't ask directions. Wanders around lost. Leaves a mess. And doesn't clean up after himself. And that is so true. <laughs> Actually, I saw a deal that the, the men hurricanes over the last... Uh, 40, 50 years, whatever, since they started dividing the names, the men hurricanes have uh, left a lot more damage than the ladies. So they need to quit naming them after men. I don't know why they keep doing it when they know they're the worst ones. But uh, get your Bibles and turn to Acts chapter 4. I don't know about you, but I've missed church. I'm just thankful to be here. Thankful for our church, and God spared our church. I'm very thankful for that. We have a lot of sayings, we have a lot of phrases to help us express our emotions. For instance, we describe a person without compassion as being heartless. We urge them to have a heart. Our deepest hurts we call heartaches. Jilted lovers, they're broken hearted. Courageous soldiers are brave hearted. Evil folks, we would say they're black hearted. Saints, we would say they have a heart of gold. If we need to speak to someone on an intimate level, we would say, I need to have a heart to heart talk with you. We go on vacation or do something that's fun, we might say, Well, we're light hearted and being light hearted. When we're not excited about something we confess well my heart's just not in it if we're discouraged depressed we may say that we we lose heart but you know you put it all together and i will say that we all need our hearts uplifted from time to time the bible says a merry heart do it good like a medicine and and so that being said, I want to share with you this morning characteristics of an encourager. And I want us to look at one of the great encouragers in the Bible. And I want to share how we can be an encourager. So Acts chapter 4 and, um, and verse 36. Acts 4, 36. Let's look at characteristics of an encourager. And Joseph who by the apostle, apostles was surnamed Barnabas, which is being interpreted the son of consolation. I want you to underline that word, consolation there. A Levite and of the country of Cyprus, having land, sold it and brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. Now you see the word consolation. That actually means encouragement. If you have a room in your Bible, you might want to write out encouragement right by it. Uh, this man, the son of consolation or the son of encouragement. And the word in the Greek that we get this word, it's, it's paraklesis or parakletos. It's where we get the word for the Holy Spirit, the comforter, the encourager, uh, the helper. Uh, the advocate, that's the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> so what's going on here is this man, Barnabas, that we're looking at this morning, he's actually doing for other people, listen, what the Holy Spirit does for each one of us. The Holy Spirit comes alongside us and encourages us. He helps us. Now understand this. It's bad enough to go through a tragedy like, like that has just happened in the Houston area, period. But how much more devastating for those who do not know Jesus Christ. Those who do not have the Holy Spirit living within them. Because the Holy Spirit is the encourager, the helper, the comforter. And, uh, and we certainly need to be an encouragement. Let me show you something else. Did you know that God is called the God of all encouragement? 
He's the God of all encouragement. Write this scripture down there in your margin. 2 Corinthians 2, verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, the God of all comfort. The word comfort there is the same word as consolation. The God of all consolation. Consolation and comfort means encourager. He's the God of all encouragement. Our God. He's the helper. So, if he's the God of all encouragement, Satan must be the sinister minister of discouragement. And he is. Well, discouragement, discouragement leads to failure. Some of you have heard of a man by the name of Bill Glass. Bill Glass was a football player. As a matter of fact, Hall of Fame football player. But he's better known now, rather than a football player, as having a prison ministry all over the country. And he's had it for 45 years. He's been preaching to inmates all over. Seen many people come to Christ. For 45 years, God has used that man. Well, he was speaking one time to about 1,000 inmates. And he asked them a question. He said, how many of you here these thousand people how many of you at some point in your life your father said you're going to amount to nothing and you're going to wind up in prison how many of you and nearly every hand was raised and they lived up to the expectations they wound up in prison well what is that that's discouragement that's discouragement that comes from Satan himself you see, we don't need to be discouraged. We need to be encouraged. And if there's ever a time that people need encouragement, wouldn't you believe that it's now? I mean, it's while they're going through all of these things, they need encouragement. I found myself, you know, you can only watch this stuff on TV so long. And if you're kind of stuck in your house, you know, and that's all that's on, of course you, can, you, you care and you're concerned. But I found myself just getting sick of all this. And I was looking for any, any ray of encouragement there would be finally something you know that oh some good news boy it's hard it was hard to find it it's hard to hear it folks people need it they need encouragement you have a you have an outline in the in the bulletin on the back of the bulletin I'd encourage you to get it out I want to share with you three things you can fill in the blanks three things three characteristics of encouragement first of all encouragers practice stewardship please write it down this is extremely important encouragers if you want to be a, an encourager you must practice stewardship now I want to show you if you'll look at verse 37 again it says about Barnabas having land sold it and brought the money and laid it at the apostles feet now, that's an encourager for you. Barnabas practiced stewardship. He had much. Now, during that time, there was persecution going on. I'm thankful that we're dealing with this, the, the aftermath of this hurricane, but at least we're not being persecuted right now. Or, you know, we're scared that they'll come in here and, and disrupt this service. Uh, but they were having that. They were having persecution. But they were also having poverty. They were having very difficult times in Jerusalem, and they needed some help. And so here comes Barnabas, an encourager. He sold his land. He gave, he gave the money, laid it at the apostles' feet. He's a steward. He was a steward. Now, I have with me $100. And I need someone that I can trust to be a steward with this. Any, any takers just to hold on to this and do what I ask you today? Anybody? No, no, it needs to be somebody I trust. Somebody just hold on to this for just a few minutes. Okay, I'll get you to hold on to this. You'll, be, you'll do what I ask you to do. All right, good. All right. See, here's, why, here's what I want you to understand. We get all caught up in ownership. 
We're not owners, folks. We're stewards. We're managers. Whatever God's given you and me, we've got it just for a little while. If you don't believe me, you try taking it with you when you die. It ain't going to happen. You're a manager. You're a manager. You're a steward for just a little while. So we've got to make sure that we do whatever God wants us to do. And I mentioned earlier, every good gift, every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights. So all the good things we have, He's given us, but He's he's not given us to keep it and own it. He's given us to manage it, to be a steward for just a little while. Extremely important that we understand that. There was a godly businessman named Stanley Tam, and he said something. You might want to jot this down. It's real short. It is what you sow that multiplies, not what you keep in the barn. I would encourage you to write it down because it's true. If, if you were raised in the country and may, maybe y'all had a garden or whatever, then, you know, you can have all the seeds you want, but it's not going to do a bit of good in the barn. You've got to go out and sow the seeds. And... Uh, and that's the only way it's going to multiply. But if we do so, then we reap a crop. So we, gotta, we, we must give. The Bible says give. It's a principle. Give and it should be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men give unto your bosom. For with the same measure ye meet with all, it shall be measured unto you. If you don't give, you're not going to receive. You say, well, I don't have a lot to give. You know, Barnabas had some land. I don't own it. I don't have any land. That's okay. You can give help. We're asking you to do that today, actually. You can, you can give some time. You can give some energy. You can give love and some attention and some encouragement. We all can do that. We do have much to give. Whatever you have that's good... It comes from God, and we're to be a steward. You remember Peter and John, when the, the man that was laying at the gate called Beautiful, they, they, he wanted something. You give us something. Some alms, give us something. Give me something to eat. Give me some money. They said, we don't have any money. Silver and gold have a none. They didn't have any money. Such as a have, give of thee. See, it's not whether or not you've got a lot of money. It's whatever... God has given you. You are to be a steward with that. Dina, would you give that, pass that money? Would you, Terry, you'd be a good steward? All right, Terry, be a good steward. I knew I could trust a couple of y'all. I tell you what, Terry, if you had passed that on over there to Sharon, you see, I was a good steward because it's not my money it was Sharon and Larry's money I don't know I think it was Sharon's money <laughs> but but I, I I just want you to see y'all it's not it's not ours if you have some money or you have a house or you have some land or you have some some good health whatever you have it you're to be a steward a steward give All right, number two, encouragers extend friendship. Barnabas extended friendship. Look at verse 22, Acts chapter 9. I need you to go to Acts 9. Acts chapter 9, go quickly now. Acts chapter 9, look at verse 22. But Saul increased the more in strength and confounded the Jews which dwelt in Damascus, proving that this is very Christ or the very Christ. And after that many days were fulfilled the Jews took counsel to kill him Saul and there laying await was known of Saul and they watching the gates day and night to kill him then the disciples took him by night and led him down by the wall in a basket and when Saul was come to Jerusalem he essayed that means he tried to join himself to the disciples but notice this they were all afraid of him and believed not that he was a disciple now, I don't blame him. <laughs> I mean, he had been killing Christians. 
I mean, he had been persecuting them. He had been throwing them in prison. He had been taking them out of their homes. He had been whipping them and on and on and on. And then now, actually, Stephen has just been stoned to death. And they don't trust this guy. He was the ringleader. So I don't blame them. Notice verse 27. But Barnabas, but Barnabas took him brought him to the apostles and declared unto them how he had seen the Lord in the way and that he had spoken to him and how he had preached boldly at Damascus in the name of Jesus Christ thank God for Barnabas Barnabas was an encourager Barnabas encouraged Paul he extended love listen Paul needed a friend Paul lost all of his friends okay all the people he hung out with there was persecuted Christians he's lost all those friends <laughs> he don't have any of those he needs a friend Paul's just come to Christ. He's just been saved. And he needs somebody to be a friend. And Barnabas was that friend. Here's Barnabas. He finds a new believer and makes a friend out of him. Somebody said a friend is someone who comes in when everybody else goes out. How true that is. Did you know that psychologists tell us that 70% of, of people suffer from chronic loneliness? That's the statistics, 70% suffer from chronic loneliness. Seven out of ten people. In a 2020 special, it was revealed that psychologists are giving psychotherapy to newborn babies. And babies that uh, up to a year old, they're giving psycho, uh, psychotherapy. Why? Why? Because some of these babies have never been hugged. They've never been kissed. They've never been held and cuddled. And if they don't get that, if they don't have anyone to show them that kind of attention, they become cold as they grow older and indifferent and even brutal. The program goes on to say that uh, while you can spoil children, and we know you can, they said it's virtually impossible to spoil a newborn all the way to a year. They need all of the attention they can get. They need all the affection that they can get. I want to tell you this morning, I believe it's virtually impossible to spoil a newborn believer. When someone comes to Christ, they need all the attention and all the love all the encouragement and discipling that we can give them. And I think that's one of the great areas that we fall and fail in the church today. We'll lead someone to Christ, and then we sort of leave them on their own. And then there are, there are babies out there, and no one's caring for them. If we see someone and we lead someone to Christ, we've got, even if we find someone that just came to Christ, we must help them as much as we can. Love on them. Spend time with them encouragers extend friendship let me show you one more encouragers build partnerships for the sake of time let me just tell you what's going on when Stephen was stoned remember the first deacon he was stoned to death for preaching <laughs> for for standing up for Jesus Christ Stephen was stoned to death well when that happened like that was like the last straw so these Christians took off running and I mean, they just ran away. Some of them went as far as 300 miles to the north. And um, there was a place called Antioch in Syria. And this, this place, something began to happen. These Christians that had fled up there and run up there to hide out, basically, a revival broke out. And... Uh, and so much so, the word got all the way back to Jerusalem, and the elders decided, you know, we, we need to send somebody up there. We need to make sure that everything's okay or see how we can help. So guess who they sent? They sent Barnabas. They made a wise choice because he lived up to his name, son of consolation, the son of encouragement. And so Barnabas went over there or went up there, and guess what he did he rejoiced again for the sake of time I'm just gonna tell you what happened he rejoiced at what he saw 
He saw these people were serious. They were loving the Lord Jesus. And so he, everything was positive. He didn't try to look for what's wrong. Wait a minute. We don't do that at our church. No. He was encouraging to these people because they were lifting up the name of Jesus. They were worshiping. They were believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. So he was so excited. He was so positive. That's what they needed. And he gave that. And then he saw something else. He said, they need some help here. I've got to get them, I've got to get them somebody else to come and help lead them. Guess who he went and got? Saul. The Apostle Paul. See, he knew that God had called him to minister to the Gentiles. And so he went. Barnabas partnered with Saul, who became Paul. I'm so grateful for that. I'm so grateful for those who encourage us. I'm thankful for you. You're an encouragement to me. Over and over and over, you're an encouragement to me. And I'm so thankful for that. I promise you I am. There's been so many times I was kind of down, I kind of discouraged, and somebody just came and encouraged me. And I, I don't take it lightly. I'm so thankful for encouragers. Did you know that God's all over that? Did you know God's all over unity? God's all about unity. The Bible says in Psalm 133, Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. God hates disunity among the brethren. You see, there's some that sow discord. They, 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 they don't like something. They look for something they don't like. They don't like something somebody said, and they don't like this, and they don't like that. And so they sow discord. Did you know God hates that? Six things that the Lord hates. Yea, seven are abomination to him. Proverbs 6, one of them is he that sow a discord among the brethren. I was listening to a message just last night. And, boy, there's some serious warnings. I might, I might preach some of that sometime. But there's some serious warnings to people who attack believers. Believers attacking other believers. And especially a man of God. Serious warnings. We need to be very careful that we don't sow discord among the brethren. You see... We're on the same side as those who are preaching Jesus Christ, those who are praising Jesus Christ. I want you to turn to one more scripture very quickly. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. I'll give you a moment to get there. Just one more verse. First Thessalonians chapter 5. And look, if you will, at verse 14. It says, Now we exhort you, brethren, talking to the believers, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, be patient toward all men. Notice the phrase, comfort the feeble-minded. Underline it in your Bible. You know what that means? Comfort the feeble-minded? It means encourage the discouraged. That's what that means. Encourage the discouraged. I'm going to remind you again, folks, we've got people that are discouraged all over the place now. All around us. You go south, you go west, you go north, you go east, you're going to find people around this area and actually all over the country who are discouraged, but especially now in our area. We are commanded, encourage the discouraged. In one of the Peanuts comic strips, Lucy's talking to Charlie Brown. He said, Charlie Brown, she's instructing him, you know. Charlie Brown, people on a cruise ship, they, they put their deck chairs in different directions. Some people put them facing the front of the ship so they can see where they're headed. Some people put, they put their deck chairs on the back and facing the back so they can see where they've been. Charlie Brown, some people, they, they put their deck chairs on the side so they can see where they are now. Lucy asked Charlie Brown, how do you do it? He said, I can't even get my deck chair open. 
There's a lot of folks right now who are like Charlie Brown. They're just discouraged. They don't know where to go. They don't know where to turn. We need to encourage them. Barnabas practiced stewardship. He extended friendship. He built partnerships. Where did it all start for Barnabas? How did Barnabas become somebody? You know what the Bible says? It says that he was a good man. He was full of the Holy Ghost. It says he was full of faith. How did it, where did it start? Where did it start for Barnabas? Let me tell you where it started. When he came to Jesus Christ. He didn't just, he wasn't born a great man full of faith in the Holy Ghost. It, it started when he came to Jesus Christ. Have you come to Christ? I know you go to church, but are you born again? If not, I encourage you to come to Christ today. And I encourage you, if you're saved and you know Christ, I encourage you to be an encourager. Be an encourager. I'm going to warn you, you better get ready. There's a lot of tension out there, and it's going to get worse. I mean, the traffic People are going to be impatient. They're going to get angry. You better be prepared ahead of time to be loving, kind, compassionate. Turn the other cheek. Be an encourager. Let's all stand. With our heads bowed and our eyes closed. We'll have a verse of invitation. I'll be at the front if you want me to pray with you. Father, we just ask that you would help us to be encouragers, especially now, more than ever. We ask for you to just take our lives over. Help us to, to be the Christian ambassadors that we need to be. Just blessing this time. If there's one lost, I pray they come to you. In Jesus' name, amen.